Hello and welcome everybody, it's my Nusha, and today we're going to be doing a video real quick on the MVave SMC pad, also known as the Vengoa SMC pad, I believe. It goes under a few different manufacturers, but it's essentially the same controller. Um, one of the presets on here, if you hit shift and preset two, is this Mackie control mode. Um, one thing you're going to want to do here is make sure your ports are set up in Ableton. So here's Ableton Live. Go ahead and hit options, preferences. And then here, you know, obviously make sure that everything is correct with your audio. And then MIDI. You're going to have three separate Mackie control surfaces. And then you're going to put the input and output for each SMC pad here. So SMC pad, port 2 for line 2, and port 3 for port 3. However, and then make sure that your settings are about roughly the same here. You can pause the video and uh, copy these over. Just make sure that they're more or less correct. All right, cool. So let's go back over here. And this is very interesting because even though it doesn't have like a session view or anything like that, it actually has a lot of very um, just nice general Mackie features. So I went online and I looked up what CCs and notes and uh, generally what the Mackie protocol uses for Ableton Live. And then I changed some of the pads and functions here to, to uh, mimic that. So you could essentially use this kind of like a little mixer or something. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, so first here on this section here, on this preset, again, shift preset two, it's going to show you this. This will select the different tracks. So you can see as I hit these, it is reflected on the screen. If you want to go to the next four tracks, you can hit pad bank. And right there, the way I have this set up only controls uh, eight tracks because you would use these left and right buttons for moving um, other pad banks, but I actually find it easier to use these as just kind of general MIDI mappings or maybe channel left and right if necessary. Um, and then along with that, you'll have your record arming. I have solar record off, but you can change that in the preferences by going over here, right clicking on that and hitting arm exclusive. And now whenever you arm something, it arms by itself. We also have solo capabilities and as you can see it'll mute anything that isn't getting exclusively soloed. And then same as before we have our mutes as well. So that's the general overview of what the pads do in this section here. Along with that, with the track selection, these knobs in knob bank one will generally do volume control for each associated track. So one, track two, track three, four, so on and so forth. Let's unsolo that, right? Um, so then if you want to do panning, I actually found I had to program that myself, but I will, I will provide you guys the file that I used. So what you're gonna do is hit shift and the octave up button. Now this is going to bring you to the selection that I have added in and I added this in to just kind of have a little bit more control given what the MCU protocol has so I didn't have to do any Python coding or anything and uh, that way you guys can go in and change it on the controller yourselves if you want. So obviously these are going to be arrow keys. You can use this to navigate around the session. Uh, the, the big green button here, the bright one, is going to be just enter to play a singular sound. Um, and then the dark green one is for launching whatever scene you happen to be hovering over. So now we have our tracks playing in the back. Uh, let's say you wanted to do a little bit of volume control. You can still do that here. So I can take track three, which is our bass, and turn that down. Let's say that's just a little too loud. I can turn that down here. Make it a little more manageable. I see one track is still muted, so we're going to go ahead and unmute that. So that's track number six, so it's a little too loud too, so we're going to bring that back down. Oh, I actually grabbed the wrong track. It seems perhaps it was five. 
But either way, you see, you get a lot of control. It's a little hard to see certain things here and there, but it is very... Just kind of nice to have these options here for when you want them. Get more pleasant levels going on here. All right, and then you have your transport controls over here to the side. So you have stop, start. You also have recording, so you can record into the arrangement view. Um, if we hit shift and octave back up, back into this mode, you'll notice that we have a couple of other colored options here. Um, so what we have is by the arrow keys, we've got an undo and we have a redo. Um, I already went over the enter and then the launch scene. These, uh, basically this turns a looping on and off, which is a bit more functional in arrangement, which I'll show you in a second. This switches from volume to panning on the pots. So purple for panning is how I like to remember it, right? So we're on channel four right now. That's a base, I believe, maybe not. Let's see, so we can take knob number four and switch, and switch it around. And as you can see on the screen, we are now getting panning, which again, it's really nice to have in a controller like this. It's very customizable, which I think is fantastic. Um, and then finally we have this. This gives you access over the volumes of your return tracks. So as you can see, I'm actually doing the panning. You just hit the panning flip again, and now you can control your return tracks. A little cumbersome based on the controller. I really wish there were more buttons, obviously, but for what this is, I mean, this is pretty amazing, right? Um, so then we can move on to these top four here. We have arrangement that'll flip back and forth between the arrangement and session views. We have the browser. Um, you can't really use the arrows here to control anything in the browser. That is simply just for track control, but it's nice to be able to just kind of pop the window up and down when you need it. Um, and then we have the, uh, I believe this is like the clip and effects view or detail view. Sorry, so the, yeah, this is clip and effects. So if we were to go to, let's say, this track right here where my drums live, we could hit that and it'll open and close that for us to look at. And then device view basically just hides everything at the bottom of the screen, regardless of what you happen to be looking at at that time. Um, so that is the general overview of things. Um, I don't have much more added on there. I didn't want to overcomplicate things. This still adds a lot of um, functionality to the controller. Certain things still aren't working. This is actually supposed to be like a track left and right selection. It does not seem to be working, but at least we have this going on right now. Um, and then on top of that, I just figured since I'm already adding in this template to get back to the main control, you can just hit shift octave down. Um, because I already added in this template here, I just figured it'd be fun to add in a couple other things. Um, uh, there's also, if you hit the knob bank, these knobs are unassigned. So you can MIDI see, see them to your heart's content. You have eight free knobs to do what you want. And then from here, I'm going to go to my other preset. This is my realistic drums preset. Now, I like to use this because, like it says, uh, it gives me a realistic drum kit. That's why I like to use it, right? So we have uh, two kicks. We have our floor tom. We have our pedal hat. Regular hi-hat. Tip. Snare. High tom. Middle tom. Duplicates of the hi-hats. You can switch this out if you want, but I do kind of like having double uh, open hats. And then ride, snare, crash, or not snare, uh, ride, crash, splash, whatever you may have. And the reason I like this is because it not only does it mimic the outlay of a, uh, a drum kit, but I find it more natural to actually play with my hands, you know, so I can actually just kind of use my, my thumbs as my feet. I mean, you know, so as you can see, it's just you keep your hand in a very natural resting position and but get like a whole kind of vibe about the uh, about the um, about the kit. I actually think I got that from Quest for Groove. I got the idea from fucking awesome. So I'm including this in there, too, just because, you know, it's neat. I just thought it would be nice. And then this is something else I did, too. Um, I'm calling this um, 
colorful chromatics. It's basically just the regular pad setup. So you have, you know, C to C in octaves. Um, but I color coordinated it so uh, flats and sharps are just dimmer than the rest. And then C notes are always white. So when you go up and down an octave, it continues um, directly. It doesn't repeat anything because uh, I wanted it to feel as natural as possible when going up and down. Um, and I just wanted to kind of more familiarize myself with the layout of a keyboard or like a guitar so I didn't want to rely on any kind of like scales or anything so this is really nice because not only does it help you orient yourself of like where you are so you know like this is always C which means that that's always B that's always A that's always D this is F or this is E this is F etc you know C sharp D sharp F sharp you just kind of know where everything is and you get so used to it after a while and I actually think it adds a lot of functionality just to not only the controller, but just the way that you can process everything in your mind, maybe get a little bit more familiar with intervals and stuff. And it just looks cool, you know? And obviously with this controller, you could take the time if you wanted to, to set up uh, scales and everything, but it just isn't quite built for that in a natural way. So you could put it in like a minor scale if you want, but if you transpose it up and down, you know, it might not necessarily still reflect that scale when you transpose it. So it's just things to think about. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna include this with my, um, with my drum kit. With my drum kit layout and then the MCU protocol layout as well. Uh, so, Hopefully you guys can get some use out of this. I really hope and encourage anybody with Python chops to take this and make it into a much more fleshed out controller. The only person I've really seen do something like that with a type of controller like this is Coral White. I'll link a I'll put a link to their channel on here. They did something similar with the SM key. Um, but this is just begging to be built up for Ableton Live. And let's say you don't use Ableton Live, you could actually still use. Uh, this setup for a lot of things you may just have to change some of the cc's and notes inside of the actual um, controller software itself um, to match your daw because i'm using ableton live every one of them is a little bit different uh, so let's go ahead and i'll see if i can pull up midi suite really quick and then here you will see how everything is marked off you can switch through police presets here in the global settings and then just play around with it. It offers quite a bit. You know, you can do combination uh, Mackie control protocols, custom SciSex messages, Mackie control protocols, uh, program messages, momentary toggles, CCs, notes. You get a lot of opportunities to do stuff in here. And I think it's really cool. Um, I got this controller for like $36 after taxes and shipping from AliExpress. And it took a long time to get here. It took about six weeks before I actually got it, but it's, just constantly proving to me that it's awesome, let alone that it's Bluetooth and battery powered. Very powerful controller. Um, I'll see if I can do a couple more sound examples utilizing the controller since I didn't seem to record the sound of my DAW out while I was doing this. Um, but again, hopefully this helps you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, go ahead and give a like, subscribe, notification, whatever, and share this with anybody else with this type of controller that you maybe think could use something like this. Uh, thanks again, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.